I've got Mr. Heyman Kanonia right here on ET now joining us at Davos uh, with me. Thank you very much, sir, for being with us. Uh, this really was an event that was dominated by India, the Prime Minister's keynote, plenary address and all of that. As an Indian corporate, what did you make of the speech? No, I think it was good from the perspective that, you know, he talked about globalization, he talked about integration, mm. and which is very important because the topic this year has been that, you know, it's a fractured world which is getting into so how That's to integrate right. it. Yes. So I think that those were very good discussions which he was able to voice that India stands for globalization mm. and it is committed to that. And I think that, you know, more of investments could have been covered further and uh, more or less I think that people are quite excited about India mm. and they want to come and invest in India because there is a good atmosphere and environment which uh, the Prime Minister and this government has been able to create in the right. last uh, right. three and a half years. Now we have to take it to the second level to see large investments coming in so those particular opportunities need to be more specific which the Prime Minister I'm sure could not have covered hmm. but because they are other ministers so they can be more specific sure. in looking at these opportunities where investments can be made sure. because now we want huge investments to come in and into manufacturing, into infrastructure and not in brownfield and stress and assets but into greenfield projects also because that is going to trigger off uh, employment and also the infrastructure way right. that we are looking at. But sir, you know, uh, I, before I go into specifics, I'll just talk to you a generic question on growth and growth is likely to be 7.4% this year, it's you know, higher next year, uh, which will get us back the coveted title of the fastest growing economy in the world. But what difference does it really make? Uh, A, do the macroeconomic fundamentals reflect the euphoria that we're seeing here or the, the euphoria that we're seeing in Indian markets uh, and would you caution against that euphoria? No, I don't think so. There is a euphoria in the Indian market at this particular juncture because, you know, after the demonetization, after introduction of GST, after the introduction of IBC, which has happened, all these are good moves from the government, from the reform perspective. But at the ground level, people to be in a position to embrace that and to be in a position to deal with it in a practical That's manner right. and yes. find out solutions. It is taking them time. So it is not that it is going to be, it has been very easy for people, especially the tiny industries, the small and medium enterprises, even the larger ones with the IBC and with the banks also not knowing exactly how it has to be dealt with because companies who are being pushed into IBC also. You know, before, before I go to IBC, I will ask you a quick question on GST. And GST is obviously a disruptive reform. It would take time for India to get used to it, teething troubles. By when do you believe we can boast of a near perfect GST. We're making changes in every council. But by when do you think we can talk about an easy GST, more compliance? I think it is still some time to go because uh, the attitudinal change which mm. needs to happen at the level of bureaucracy from the leadership level, mm. they want things to change. But at the bureaucratic level, that you know, they need to understand that if the simplification is not there, people will not be able to deal with it because you want to bring the whole country and all the businesses on the GST platform. So the platform has to be very easy. It's, it has to be like, you know, iPhone introduces all the smartphones. So it is so easy for even a child to embrace that. So similarly, GST has to be as simple right. as embracing And it's a long way technology. to go, according to you. I think so. Okay, let me ask you the question on IBC. And obviously, with an intention to clean up banks' balance sheets, IBC norms have been revised. Uh, many corporates in India believe that uh, this leaves them in a very disadvantageous situation. They cannot bid for assets that they previously own. What's your take on that? Because, you know, while there is one argument that they can't, the other argument is that if you let the asset fail so much, you perhaps have no moral right to it. No, I think so. It has to be, you know, the wheat has to be segregated from the shaft. Yes. That is very, very important. And you can't put everyone into one bucket and say that, you know, everyone, because the business has failed so that the business person who has been running the business has stolen money out of the business. There could be circumstances, there can be environmental changes which has happened. And we have seen, especially in the infrastructure sector, there have been so many changes. Even with the GST, there has been disruptions, the demonetizations, the disruptions that happen, which is external environment. And for the external environment, you cannot blame the business people. So I think that there would be some errant, uh, some promoters. errant promoters. Oh. So they need to be segregated and you have to take it strict action. It can't be a blanket ban really. It can't be a blanket ban because, you know, businesses like we are running a financial institution and That's we have right. seen that 90% of our NPL recovery, 90% oh. has happened because we have worked with the promoters closely and they have been able to revive it because if you they bring They can't just be branded guy, as the bad guys and then let them... So therefore, you know, I'm, I'm just sharing my personal experience mm. and because this has been our experience and, mm. and it's not that, you know, we are running a small book, That's we right, are also absolutely. running a large book. True. And so if we can do it and mm. we can be successful, mm. so why not others? 
So that's the way that we look at it. So just a short while back, the finance minister has announced PSU Bank recap details, uh, more guidelines, more SOPs for lending, consortium and all of that. So at least 10% uh, by every lender can't piggy ride on the large ones. I think 80,000 crore rupees is being front loaded uh, this fiscal itself. Uh, do you believe this is going to make, uh, and of course, you know, more monitoring of 20, 250 crore worth of uh, loans and above. Do you believe this makes credit off take easier or do you believe it, the due diligence could make it more cumbersome? No, I think that more guidelines come in ah. and uh, it complicates things. And especially for the PSUs, they have to be allowed to develop their own commercial business model. So there has to be tightening of the risk, which the self-discipline has to be imposed by the banks. Right. And, you have, and you have RBI as a monitoring agency, which is already looking at the quality of assets. But more and more governmental guidelines come in and more and more uh, you know, embargoes are put in. It will complicate things as it is. The lending is totally, you know, is dried down. And especially businesses. It's very difficult for businesses to borrow from PSU banks. That's right. Everyone is happy to do, uh, you know, customer, just credit lending to the retail customers. But is that so, the way so that we want the, the country to go? Exactly. So then what is the resort for big businesses? I mean, very difficult. I think that we don't see, I don't see that with the present environment that mm -hmm. until something is dramatically done, mm -hmm. you cannot have large greenfield projects coming up now. It's going to be only limited to some business houses. Mm -hmm. Primarily it is going to be just get dried up mm -hmm. and because the bankers are very scared in lending because they feel that they could result into NPL or they can get into problems. Right. So I don't, I don't think so that is a solution. And this 80,000 crore which is getting put in mm -hmm. to the bank if we let's look at a you know different kind of a situation where you have the NPLs, which is almost about just in the power sector, is about three lakh fifty thousand crore. If that is revived, so you just you can just imagine that how you don't have to recapitalize. So just the the focus on revival of stressed assets in a structured manner can help hmm. not in recapitalizing the bank, but making the banks again bounce back. But you know, when you say that uh, the avenues of credit are very limited for greenfield projects, are we essentially assuming that the private investment that was a big laggard last year will continue to be an issue this year as well? I think so. Because it's very difficult now so to set up. So what is it going to take for private investment to kick off? See, private investments would like uh, a better environment to be there. Sure. So therefore, there has to be government, where the government is just, you know, it cannot be uh, mentality where you know we have laid down all these guidelines and you just comply with it. It has to be a partnership approach mm. with the government because when we talk about public-private partnerships also, the public-private partnership has to be a true partnership especially for large infrastructure investments which has to take place sure. or large manufacturing companies which has to come in mm. and uh, so I think that that would be the way going forward mm. to have a public-private partnership in a true sense with the bankers also. The bankers have now taken an approach, many of the banks mm. and larger ones that you know we just want to, there are certain rules, we will just follow those particular rules. With blinders things, on perhaps. Yeah, so whether things happen otherwise tomorrow we are going to be you know, held up and we are going to be hanged for that. Right. So why should we take that right. risk? So the partnership approach mm. is getting dramatically changed that it is not a partnership approach. It's me who is the lender and you are the borrower. Mm. So you better follow the rules. If anything has gone wrong with the environment, so be it, so you will be hanged. <laughs> that's, so, a, that's a very, that's a, yeah, that's, I think the ring fencing of bureaucrats as well as banking officials is required because only then will they be able to take decisions. Yeah. I have a quick last question, sir, and you know, this will be the last full year budget of the Modi government. Um, Given the macroeconomic realities, crude is rising and that's going to be a headwind for us. What do you believe uh, and what's your broad expectation from the budget? See, I don't know, we, we keep on hearing a lot that this is going to be a tough budget. So therefore, you know, we, we are hear all... that before everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Therefore, we hope that it is tough in a manner which is not going to, you know, which is not going to uh, harm enterprise. the business and the enterprise because India is a country of entrepreneurs. Mm. So I think that, you know, that should be recognized and the employment can only be created. And yesterday also the Prime Minister mentioned in his speech mm. that he wants to create an India where there can be entrepreneurs who create employment, that employment creators mm. are created than employment seekers. seekers yes. So therefore I 
think for that it is very important and government plays a very important role right. to be a facilitator to create an environment where people can and small businesses so if you and we can take the example of germany that how germany has been very successful in because all the small yeah because yes. all the middle sun they are the basically the pillars so they also of married the, entrepreneurship with skills development yeah. uh, but, but you know before i let you go i'm just curious to understand a lot of people in corporate india are not as candid as you when you speak to them off the record they perhaps say what you're doing for this government that is seemingly or you know we started off thinking that they were a business friendly government what is wrong is there a crisis of confidence is there no faith that they have in uh, um, uh, you know uh, indian industry what what would you put your finger on no i think that uh, you know i would or do you believe the... indian industry at one level has called it upon themselves no i don't think so i think that you see basically it is i would not the government has been trying to do everything which is good uh. for the reforms and for making the country a better place to work in but at the same time and they also have compulsions mm. as a democracy mm. they have compulsions for the vote banks mm. so they have to balance that That's right. so what is good for the vote banks may not be good for, for the economy. long term economy economic view so i think that that balancing is an art which every leader has to do so similarly this government is also trying to do i'm not saying that the government is not been doing the right things yeah, but I at understand. the same time when the balancing happens so in a democracy because the vote bank is also sure. as important so it needs to be more nuanced yeah on that note sir thank you very much for speaking thank to you. us such a pleasure thanks. talking to you same. that's him and kanoria in conversation with us right here at davos on et now